The 2D dynamic milling toolpath differs from a conventional type toolpath in not only the cutting motion, but the chaining strategies as well. This video will be the first in a series that will be covering some of these chaining methods. In particular, this video is going to look at the machining region, machining region strategies, and the open chain stock extensions options. When the 2D high speed dynamic mill toolpath is launched, the first interface we are presented with is the Chaining Options dialog menu. On this menu, we can define the machining region and then set the machining region strategy. If the machining region results in an open chain, we can also set the open chain stock extension strategy. There are also selection options for avoidance, air, and containment regions. And finally, a place to define an entry chain. First, Let's have a look at just setting the machining region. Click on the selection button for the machining region and the familiar chaining dialog menu will open. I'll select this rectangle as if it was a pocket that needs machining. For now, the rest of the settings will be left as is. Click OK to exit the chaining options. Inside of the operation, we can stick with all the default settings for now. However, one change that will be made is the stock to leave. Set both of these to zero. I will be using a three-quarter end mill, and its speeds and feeds are not important yet. Click OK to create the operation. The completed toolpath is pretty much what we expect, a dynamic toolpath cutting a pocket. The toolpath works its way out from the start point, maintaining a constant step over. Once a corner is hit, it will work into that corner using Mastercam's dynamic motion. This motion continues until the pocket has been completely machined. Looking back at the geometry we selected, click the Geometry tab of our Dynamic Toolpath. For this path, we chained the pocket and had the machining region strategy set to Stay Inside. Let's change the strategy to From Outside and see what effects this has on the toolpath. With the change made, the operation will need to be rebuilt. Once complete, notice the difference in the toolpath. Now, the toolpath starts outside of the chained pocket, and is really more of a facing type path. Two very different toolpaths given the same chain. Next, let's look at the difference between having our machining region as an open chain versus a closed chain. The previous example, our chain was closed. This time, Let's create an open chain. Open the Chaining Options menu again by clicking the Geometry tab. Set the strategy back to Stay Inside and click the Remove Chains button for the machining region. Now, let's rechain the machining region as an open chain. Switch the chaining type to Partial and grab three sides of the rectangle. Click OK and rebuild the operation. The new toolpath looks identical to the closed chain toolpath we created earlier. Let's have a look at the effect that setting the machining region strategy from outside will have on this open chain. Switch this setting and rebuild the operation. The result is much different. Even though we have set this to from outside, the toolpath is still staying inside of the chained region and only starting from outside of the open edge. In this instance, this open edge is automatically defined by Mastercam by creating an imaginary line connecting the start and end points of the chain. The amount of distance the cutter extends outside of this line can be controlled by several methods. First, it can be controlled from within the operation's parameters. Click on the Parameters tab to open the toolpath's parameters and switch to the Cut Parameters page. We are only going to be looking at parameters which have an effect on this open edge cutting. The rest will be covered in a future video. The setting for First Pass Offset will offset the start of the toolpath an additional amount. Change this setting to 1 inch. Before we exit the toolpath parameters and rebuild this operation, have a look at the toolpath type page. On the right of this page is the same Chaining Options interface that is available when clicking the Geometry tab. Chaining can be done from this page the same as it is done from the Geometry tab. 
Ensure that the open chain extension is set to none. Click OK and rebuild the operation. The toolpath now extends further past the open edge. The second way that this distance can be controlled is with the stock extension setting. For this, we first need to define some stock. Let's create a stock block that is longer in X than our feature and is also wider in Y. Notice I've made settings so that there is more stock in the X direction than the Y direction. This is used to show the function of the different stock extension types. With our stock now defined, back on the Cut Parameters tab, set the first pass extension back to zero, and then set the open chain extension to stock to tangent. Click OK and rebuild the op. The toolpath now extends tangently from the start and end of the chain to the defined stock. We can still employ the first pass offset with this stock extension as well. Set this to 1 inch again and note the difference. The other stock extension option is shortest distance. Let's make that change now and rebuild the operation again. The toolpath now extends to the defined stock using the shortest path possible. Which method to employ will depend on the starting stock and the desired resulting toolpath. Also make note that these stock extension settings will only affect open chains. The remaining chaining options will be covered in the next video.